Hey, what's going on everyone? It is David Palmer, Leo King, and welcome to Deep Astrology, your weekly astrology forecast for the week of August the 19th through the 25th of 2020. If you never watched the show before, make sure that you join us at highvibe.tv. All the links are down below, of course, in our awesome app, which is on all platforms, Apple TV, Roku, of course, on your iPhone and your Android. Make sure that you check us out there. It's a free app, by the way, and I want to remind people because Spiritual Dance Music got blocked by YouTube. So, of course, it's always free and the apps are free to watch. You don't even have to log in. You can watch it on the website. You can watch it on the app. You know what I mean? Anyways, check it out there, of course, for all my daily and weekly exclusive horoscope content and tarot content and, of course, shows like Full Disclosure or this show where you get it in its full form with the charts and so forth and you get to watch it live on Wednesday night opposed to watching it on Thursday mornings with only half of the show being physically seen, the other half being audio. And of course, I also have Battle of the Gods, which is that awesome four hour plus horoscope video where I go into this whole entire transit that we're seeing in the Battle of the Gods. And of course, it's gonna be really triggered this weekend. So, uh, and it's gonna go through for this next two and a half months. So I would definitely get this video to be prepared to understand how to handle this energy it's a lot of extremes, but I go through the history to show you how other civilizations and how the world got through it before. And we've never seen anything close to it, but at least we could get as close astrologically, mathematically as we could. I also just want to remind people that, you know, if you want to understand about your love story and so forth, go to highvibe.tv, click on Love Masterclass at the top. And for $150, it's a 10 course masterclass that I did about understanding astrology from a love standpoint and how to read your own chart and how to read the chart of other people, how to do it, not only the professional way, but with all my secrets and going through even all your own planets or other people's planets and helping you understand truly how to look at your love story and the love story of others and whether it works or not. All right, so the week that we're finally here of Mars square Saturn. And I know I'm leading with a, a transit that is actually in many um, astrological books or astrologers, let's just say, is one that we don't really like. <laughs> I'm just coming to you as a professional astrologer, right? That this is frustrations, barriers, challenges that we want to try and push through. Some astrologers have always said it's the stop sign. I like to look at it as a different way, which I'm going to say today. But we're going to have to be dealing with this on a very rare, more extended part. Since Mars is in Aries, it's going to hit 26 degrees by the, this weekend and into next week. And it's going to score Saturn at 26 degrees of Capricorn. Both are in their home signs. They're in their dominant signs. They're in their... They're in their place where they like to call home. And this is hard because Mars, of course, in Aries is charge forward. Let's do it. And Saturn is like, hold on. I want to make sure that you're on the list. Is, are you, is the structure there? Are you, do you have a plan? <laughs> like, and so that's where that whole stopping energy is. Saturn is very, you know, let's get the grounding together. Let's make sure all the pieces are there before we just jump into everything. And Mars wants to take action. But both are cardinal energies. But this is going to be extended because both are stopping, getting ready to switch opposite directions. Mars, of course, on September 9th is going to stationary retrograde. And then, of course, we have Saturn, which is coming into October, going to go stationary direct. So what does that mean? Mars and Saturn are going to hang out, squaring each other for months. Yeah, no joke. So this is typically a two to three day Sometimes weak transit, max. We're getting it for, let's just, let's just, I'll give you guys some like easy bit, bits of it. Like, let's give it like a full month, but really it's an extended more than that month. And we've never seen this in our lives. Okay? Which is why I did Battle with the Gods. And so, when we have the sun in Leo here, Wednesday, Thursday, and then leaving, you know, when we come into Virgo here into Friday, right? This is important time for us to use Wednesday, Thursday with the sun at its home. That right now with Mars being in Aries, 
outdoes Saturn's power. Because Saturn is at its home sign, but it has Jupiter and Pluto there. And so it's using Jupiter and Pluto because they're not in their home signs. And those two are power-packed planets to almost like, you know, it's like steroids. And then I heard that they're not even using just steroids anymore. I heard that some of these people now are like injecting silicone or some weird stuff into muscles to make them look a certain way. That is very much Saturn is pumping his own self up, right? To restrict and stop and control. Look at the lockdown measures that are putting out in Australia. And so it's crazy time. And so this Leo energy is so important for us right now because it's so important for us to reconnect to our heart. But I'll be honest, there's a lot of beastly energy within us. No, not the beast like the devil, but the beast of the rawness of the human that you are. You are a raw, energetic, wild animal. You are. Your heart, the heart is one. The heart has to have so much raw power and energy to just keep pumping every you know, couple seconds of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year that you're alive. That force in itself is what keeps you all alive. And so when we're not happy, there's a part of us that it's going to bring up frustrations during these times with Mars that's squaring over to Saturn. But to use the Leo energy to go, it's okay to go through frustrations and see the things that don't make us happy and to understand what does and to also not be afraid to take action towards the things that do make us happy. But it makes that complicated with Mars core Saturn. Because it's like, oh wait, hold on, uh, maybe am I doing something wrong? I, I, the reason why I don't call it the stop sign is because it's more like a checkpoint. We might be seeing a lot of checkpoints here over the next two months. So you heard, I've been saying this for a long time. Extended in other places besides the places we see them now. But I'm trying to tell you all that it's a check on, if you're going to take action on something, Saturn's saying like, one, is that part of your destiny? Two, do you have the structure in your life to handle what you want in your life? So you have to remember that Mars core Saturn actually at the same time, any, any Mars Saturn aspects are focus. Whether it's Mars conjunct Saturn, which we actually saw at zero degrees of Aquarius. So... Then, of course, we saw Mars in sextile to Saturn when it was in Pisces. Now here's the Mars square Saturn. So we saw all this within this last six months, okay? But this is going to be a point now to where it's like, okay, it better be, does it fit in with your destiny? Does it fit in with where you want to go in life? Does it, do you have the ability to even handle whatever it is that you want to go for in your heart right now, and what you want to do? Because the sun moves into Virgo and so does Mercury. And Mercury comes to its home of Virgo. And it's coming in fast. Of course, it just did its meet up with the sun uh, right before the new moon. That was on Monday. So Mercury is now actually not as fast as it was. Mercury was doing two degrees a day. And now it's, well, we'll show you in the charts. It's now back to the one, one degree and 50 minutes a day. I mean, that's fast. But, you know, it's going to be fast in Virgo. It's going to be like, it's at home, but it's going to get, this is where anxiety, frustration, can get really extreme for people. And um, I always like to, you know, I like to be, make people laugh, but I mean, we're talking about strangulation, right? Because we can get a little stressed out in Virgo, and especially with Mercury Virgo, because we want things to be changed. So this is about time for change, but you know, Saturn's only gonna allow the changes where it's like, yeah, that's gonna be better for my life and take me to another level. And I have the structure. And if I don't have the structure, there's this weird element where it's like, who do you know that does? Like, because it's, there's no more, if you look at the world today, like, if you're trying to really start something so brand new, especially business, like, there's going to be a lot of barriers you're going to have to go through. Especially, they don't even let you work on half the planet right now, at least half. And so, this is where it's kind of like, Everybody's going to be collectively going through something in their life where it's like, gosh, if I'm going to start something from new and I'm going to try to do this independently and on my own and I don't have the structure, I'm going to have to also find other people too, right? Venus is in Cancer. And this week, Venus is 
you know, I want to say somewhat pretty, pretty chilled out just because of the fact that it's not going to oppose a lot of energy until we really come into next week later on when it starts opposing Jupiter and starts opposing, you know, Pluto and Saturn. And so there's a part of us where we really need to find with, with people, the people that make us emotionally feel comfortable or feel at home or feel part of our, our destiny. And, and there's a lot that we have to figure out here with this Mercury in Virgo and the Sun in Virgo because it is a time for change. It is a time to readjust our day-to-day -day life. And even though it might feel like it's impossible with Mars square Saturn, it's more like it's a challenge. And it's a challenge for you to grow up. It's a challenge for you to take like, hey, this is, this is how I'm going to better myself. You know, when you go into a big business interview and you don't look the part, you don't have your resume ready and you're going to try and wing it, you're probably, your chances and odds are very low, believe it or not. And so same thing goes in any form of life. This is a, t a teaching lesson right now that if you want to get where you want to go in life, you have to learn to go not only from an adult space, but then there's that other space of like Capricornian energy, like, hmm. And I know this might sound very triggering, but it's like, how, how do I take advantage of the best way to get to the top of where I need to go? Like, you're not going to just be able to just go, well, if we got to get into the castle, I'm just going to like storm the castle. I'm just going to just bury down the door. You know what I mean? I'm going to get oil on me. Ah! You know, like old school shit. So this is going to be a moment where it's like, hmm, who do I know that's got flamethrowers or something, you know, I could throw some, some big old boulders over that way. Who's got some ladders or who's got the whole setup? Cause really Saturn with Jupiter, Pluto there is like, I want it all. So if you want things in your life to change, you almost have to at this point go like, what are the situations in life where I could do that with everything comes with it or not? It's kind of like a yes or no of all in or all out. And that might sound crazy, but if you're going to try, you know, because Mars isn't going to be happy and neither is Jupiter and Pluto. Jupiter and Pluto are going to be like, oh, really sad and you're going to stop this whole party from like shebanging? So, you know, Saturn's willing to have the shebang as long as everything is incorporated with Jupiter Pluto there. So you have to look for all inclusion situations now. There's no more like, oh, I could just do this. And then, you know, I'll be honest with you. There's just going to be things where it's just like, if it's just stopping you completely and it's just causing you more challenges and you are reaching for preparation H every other day or maybe every hour, or maybe you're reaching for, you know, Pepto-Bismol, or you're reaching for your aspirin every hour, or you're reaching for some sort of situation to make yourself feel better because it's just so strangulating and stopping you, you have to re-examine your whole entire reality this week. And I know that's not the easiest thing to hear, but that's the growth is wherever there is major stops, maybe there's a better way forward now, right? That's going to be hard, though, because some people don't ever want to stop. And I will say that Mars does reach 26 degrees, so it is going to square Saturn, but that means it's going to sextile and trine, trining that south node in Sag, which is leaving the exact position of the galactic center, believe it or not, and then the north node in Gemini at 26 degrees. So we're going to see Mars activating the nodes. We have Saturn and quincunx to the node, to the north node. So our destinies, and, and, I, and if you really tap into this, it sure does feel like there is a lot when it comes to destiny's call right now. Which, by the way, is uh, an awesome video that's on High Vibe that I did in a pre-video section, the preparation for 2020, survival guide, which I definitely think that you should watch. And I predicted everything that's happening right now. Um, but I would say that it's more than just a destiny's call. It's there of providence, right? Us getting on these ships and taking off in our direction. And it feels more than ever like everything right now has come to this most extreme destiny point. Of course, you heard it here first for the horoscope that got spread around Instagram and everything that it was August of 2017, the last time we had a new moon in Leo near this spot. That was the solar eclipse. And so it feels like the last three years have really come to a realization point here but you can't have the fear that you're going to fail. You know, there were a lot of great things that it taught you, but it was almost like I like to say it was like the, the situations, the people, all that you went into at that period in time had the right idea, 
just, you know, kind of felt like it was the, uh, the nicest way I could say it is like that was the dress rehearsal and, you know, now's the real show and also maybe we're changing the characters out, but same roles, different characters. Different, different clothing, different, different everything, right? Different camera, but same scenarios that we want to have energetically in our heart. And so that's, that's what is, remember, pushing us through this whole period of the next lunar cycle of this whole next month because we're with a new moon in Leo that was yesterday, which was on Tuesday, the 18th which was with Mercury to change our environment, to change our heads and to change our minds about what makes us happy and to also see full on. When we see in our head and we see logically, because remember that Mercury sextiled the North Node at the same time of that new moon. That new moon sextiled the North Node. Saturn sex, uh, quincunx the North Node and Mars is sextiled the North Node. Everything's been pointing in a beautiful direction to this North Node of your destiny, of twin-like energy, of what stimulates you. And when you know it and you see it and you know that the structure's there and you know that it's all there and you go through those little checkpoints in yourself, Mars Saturn will get you what you want. You just have to know how to play by the rules and play the game and make sure that it's part of destiny and make sure that you're not actually holding yourself back. Because that's actually what I see more with people with Mars square Saturn is how much they hold themselves back. Of course, if you're an extrovert or you're a lot of fire energy or maybe something could even, it doesn't matter, right? Just however you might be built, maybe you try and push too much, right? With a Mars square Saturn. But that's what I'm saying is like, this is, this is a very unique one with all the aspects to the North Node in Gemini, which is Rahu. And this is definitely a time for us to feel when the destiny calls, when, and it's going to feel like lightning fast. Mercury's in its home sign. Mercury and the sun in Virgo, you know, with the sun passing over Regulus, you know, this is like even more so. This is the heart of the lion. This is the, the fixed star that's on the ecliptic. And if you ever look at the zodiac of Leo and you see on the ecliptic, like that heart of the lion sits right on the ecliptic right? Like the, the, the lion like sits with its heart right where the sun and the moon's path is and the planet's path too that we see from here from earth. So the sun crossing this and with it in Virgo is to still be that regal self, but to bring it in Virgoality, right? Like ver bring it into reality, bring it into understanding how to be the pure true self and not the false self, not the opposite of Pisces. Not saying that Pisces is false, but we can fall into our own illusions or our own Especially, you know, self-sabotaging good things or, you know, afraid to face the reality and just stay in our own little weird comfort zones behind the glass and put up as much fog because we don't want to see it, but because we don't want to deal with it. It's ironic, you know, you can be on a plane on, in first class and just have a little mini paper wall behind you and make you feel like you are extraordinary, but you just go into one side of that paper wall and you feel like, you know, oh God, I'm in coach. But the only thing there is the perspective of that little tiny paper wall. And so th there's a lot of people who put themselves in this ideology that they're in or this psychology or this spiritual place that they're in that they're all okay when they don't feel okay. They might be in first class, but they don't feel good. And, 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 and you can have first class and feel good, but it's like, what is that? What is that? What needs to change about that? And, and maybe, maybe it's not exactly the way that you see it as first class. Maybe it's not even about first class. Maybe it's about who you're sitting next to. Maybe it's about what you're reading. Maybe it's about what you're thinking about. Maybe it's about the issues that are going on in yourself about, do you feel like you're on your destined path or not? What is the block? Because what Mars square Saturn for this long period and coming this weekend is the realization like you're blocked, okay? From what you want. What is it in your side of yourself that's blocking you? Why don't you speak up that truth and say the things that you want? We're going to see Mercury trying to run us this week too. Your envi everybody's environment's going to go through a positive tailspin if they're willing to accept the, the, the taking of risk and to go into better values and to have a much better place in the reality. And with Venus and Cancer here, you want to take, you know, it's kind of like, you know, and this might sound crazy. I'm going to say this. I'm already getting my light saying I need to go to the charge right now. But I'm saying that with Mars square Saturn here, 
And with Venus finishing here at the half part of Cancer and getting ready to come into the big oppositions to Jupiter, and remember that Jupiter is getting ready to come direct here soon, that you want to, it's almost like stocking for food and stocking for things, or if you're, you know, relationship, fighting relationships with the emotions, because it's about to go through extreme hardships here with the square to Mars, with the opposition to Saturn, and that T-square. So, and then this week with the moon, right, because it was new, it's in Virgo, it's in Libra, with all this energy of changing our reality, and then coming into Scorpio with a trine to Venus. So this moon in Scorpio will try in Venus. So I, I just want to say that there's a lot about like storing and how ironic because if you look at this from a spiritual place, we're all going to feel like the world's restricting us in many ways. So we want to have the things we want, but that also means spiritually, but it also means literally. That's where you're going to see supply chains over this next two months of products that you want, of things that you really want in your life to start to disappear. And that's not some conspiracy theory. This is an astrology talking. Let's go to the charts. <laughs> yeah. So, well, Craig is resetting the cameras. I thought I would take you through the galaxy with me. See what's going on here. Ooh. Of course, where are we at right now? The actual time? Um, yep. Okay. Actual time? Oh, it's... 22, 23. So here's Mercury, right? Here's the Earth. So that was Mercury passing the Sun. Remember, the Mer Mercury's been on the other side of the Sun from Earth. But what the big thing is, is this Mars element, right? So we're going to see this big Mars Saturn square. So remember that right now, if you look at it from top view, here's Mars, here's Venus, right? So we can go back to the Venus retrograde that was this spring, right? when Venus passed through and then now Venus has come and Venus is fast, right? So here we are. I'm talking to you on August 19th and here's Mars and Venus in square. Cause if you look at this from like an earth point of view, you'd be able to see that it would, it would look like it was in a square. You can actually see them up in the sky at night, which has been beautiful to see Mars rise in the early, like mid, mid to late, uh, you know, part of the evening. And then, Really, of course, early in the morning of the, the next day, of course, is when you see Venus rise and you still see Mars up in the sky. But when we turn this all around, right, we got to remember that the Earth is looking at this Jupiter Saturn Pluto alignment that's really intense right here, right? So we got, the, we got, you could see it out here in the horizon. Um, there you go, right there. And so here's Venus. And good aspects, I guess, that's coming. Well, now it's going to oppose, right? Because of the sun. I mean, sorry, the, the, the earth will be in opposition to that stuff. Remember, astrology and, and, and uh, geo-based is based off the earth's point of view, not the sun's point of view. From the sun's point of view, it's looking at things like this. Remember, all these big planets are in the same area of the sky. Okay, except for Uranus, of course. But actually, Uranus is right there. So actually, it's just Mercury. So, you know... This is a very, very odd time. But what I'm about to show you here is why this is going to be such an intense square with Saturn is if we come up and you can see Mars, there's Jupiter, which is getting ready to come direct, and then there's Saturn. So when you see how far Saturn is out here, it's even hard to like for me to do it, but there's Saturn and Mars in alignment. See that? Boom. And they're going to be there like that for a long time. Okay, and the Earth is going to be looking at that because now if I take you zoomed in on the Earth point of view, okay, let's move that Earth to, we get to September 9th, which is when we're going to see Venus, or sorry, Mars retrograde. Okay, so that's because we're going to start our path of passing Mars. And then we're going to see as we come into October here, and September 9th, and then, so sorry, September 9th, I think I had that wrong. So September 9th, yep. Then here it is coming to September, and there it is October, right? So there's the pass. And that's when Mars is going to be retrograde, and it's going to be still looking at Saturn from this view. And that's going to be hard, square point. Plus with Jupiter. So Mars, the battle of the gods, is going to get nuts with Mars and these, these three together. And, and, and Mars is alone, except 
they don't show Chiron in here, but we got Chiron. And of course, Eris is here. If we go way out and we look where Mars is, right? There's Eris. That's the 10th planet that was found. And uh, we'll have to back up actually and show you. There, there you go. There's Eris down there. You can see it down here. Okay. And so you see how Mars and Eris are exactly together? And she is, uh, she brings up a lot of turmoil, a lot of craziness, especially if it's not in your truth and with the frustrations of Mars hitting that too. That's hardcore. And then just to finish this out at the same token is, I remember that Chiron is, is, is out, you know, this way, which I'm surprised they don't show Chiron, which kind of blows my mind. But um, th this is, this is going to get pretty intense here, folks. And I would say that you want to use this week, if I come back to the actual time, as like, you know, as this week goes on from the 19th to the 25th, where we end right here, you know, this is like the preparations before we come into the following week when we really start to see Mars stop and we're going to see Mars get more red in the sky. And then at the same token, we're going to see Venus be making hard aspect to Mars. Venus and Mars aren't going to get along. And you're going to also see from another point of view here, you're going to see that Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, uh, with the Earth looking at that as a very hard aspect, right? Because it's going to feel like Earth is right caught up in between that here coming into September. All right, because, you know, like, it's going it, to, it, it's, if you see, it's almost like from, it's a peripheral thing, but from the point of view, it just looks like, oh, wow, they're in a big hard aspect. And so, this is a time also with Mercury that's fast before the next Mercury retrograde that comes, right? Before, because watch when Mercury comes to its retrograde time in October, look at that. It's going to be in exact opposition to Mars and the Sun. I mean, the sun, I mean, sorry, the Earth will be exactly opposite Mercury, Sun, and Mars, right? And in the middle of, with the Moon. You can also watch the Moon, right? And we're going to get that new Moon that's going to be really rough. We're going to get a full moon at the same time that's with the beginnings of Mercury retrograde. So I'm just preparing you all to get all this stuff done now. I've, I keep saying that. Uh, time just feels like it's shorter and shorter. But when you see life and you see destiny and you see things that make you feel better and that make your heart get, go, and with this Virgo energy, it's about purity. You th see th things that are going to make your life pure. You see Mars square Saturn now. It's like, let's start to prepare. Let's start to actually like have the life I really want to have. I want to have that structure. And if you've got to do things that are, you know, with Uranus and Taurus, like, you know, it is the ducktails element, like, you know, we all need something in our lives, we, you know, but you got to have, there's rules. So anybody that tries to do things illegally is not going to work. Okay. So that's why you're going to see huge police hunkering down on people trying to riot during these times. The, the, they will get the military out. People are going to try. And then what's weird is you're going to see jobs, the economy, and all that stuff just get tanked here um, by the transits of Jupiter Pluto. So you, you've got to be prepared in the sense that are you sure you're in the right structured place? Are you really just trying to start something right now? When people, the last thing they're going to be thinking about is like what your new business adventure is that nobody's got used for at the moment. Unless you find some sort of use. That's what I'm saying is it's not a full stop, but it's a stop for a lot of things that aren't in aligned with the timing or aren't in aligned with the universe at the, at the moment. And that goes with relationships and, and, and that's what we're going to go into the charts with. So make sure that you go to highvibe.tv uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and so you can watch this full show. And uh, it's a seven day free trial. Of course, we got the apps down below on all those networks, but the mothership of course is highvibe.tv. And then of course you can watch that on the website or any of the apps and watch where I go into the charts now. How I did like this, but of course I'll be going into the actual astrology charts and using my pen and going into them. So thanks so much for watching. Of course you go audio only now on YouTube and for those that are on Hive, I've been watching you live right now. I love you all very much and let's go into the charts right now. Huh? Okay. We good now? We good now? All right, so let's go to the charts now. So here we are Wednesday, August the 19th. And this is 
we just finished that new moon and Mercury also at the same time in Leo. And, and, and with Mercury coming on top of Regulus here, Wednesday night into Thursday morning, it's like there's been things over this new moon that have been shown to us with the sun and the moon together and with Mercury that have been like, okay, God showed you something beautiful that could be of your heart. Are you going to do it or not? I think that's one. I know it might sound so simple and so stupid, but it's true. Are you going to do it or not? That moon now in Virgo for the first couple days here, Wednesday into Thursday, not really making too many hard aspects. Of course, it is going to make good sextiles to Venus. So this is about trying to find ways that are going to make us feel better. I mean, you know, Venus doesn't want to switch places with the moon, even though the moon would rather be in Cancer sign. So it's, a, it's an odd mutual reception that I wouldn't call it really mutual. I'd call it a reception that one side's getting the good news. Because remember that Venus is at detch or at fall position, the worst position in Virgo, and the moon would rather be in Cancer. But they almost kind of don't want to switch because the moon in Virgo is like, well, at least they can t I can clean up and tidy up this place here. And Venus is like, well, at least in Cancer here, I'll, I'll uh, make it really nice physically instead of just emotionally. And that's the thing with Venus. Venus is in Cancer, people. You have to make your physical life the comfort or the things that make you feel happy, especially with the sun fishing in Leo, physically. It's not just emotionally. It's emotionally, physically at the same time. And that's what that moon in Virgo is trying to do. And I would say that the big things as well as that we are seeing into this week was that the sun in the sextile to the north node on Wednesday, which is like, uh, where is your life headed? What you spent Wednesday doing was, this is what your life is headed towards. And you have to look at everything around that. What's in your life? What's being talked to you about? What's in your DMs? What's in your texts? What's in your emails? Start to really look at, and even the people that you're talking to, like these, this, is the, this is the energy of what your life is that was just revealed in the last 48 hours. And you have to take very, that's what, 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 what Gemini is, is like stop looking at even to try and find more. What did the universe show up with on this new moon? What did the universe show up with that in many ways kind of has a little bit of that three year, you know, sting or ring to it and, and it, you could go into a better place with. Uh, and we also saw Venus and Uranus in sextile, which of course could have been a random person that showed up into your life that you might be thinking about or a random project that you could be thinking about a lot that you're ready to, to make kind of a crazy leap towards. Or you're, you know, that's also choosing people in the world that they're, you, you might be putting them in emotionally quick. Well, what is it going? Is it still doing it? Well, we'll be one second. Will you just put it on the chart for people? Yeah. And All right, we're back. You know, that's Mars square Saturn. <laughs> so let's look at Thursday now, as we, you were probably just taking a look at here. We're finishing this Sun in Leo, and Mercury is in Virgo with the Moon. And the moon's going to be making a lot of aspects here Thursday. So the moon's going to oppose Neptune. Mercury now in its home side of Virgo. Woo! We can figure out a lot of things and make a lot of changes really fast. And I think that it's actually a godsend having, the Mercury, having Mercury in Virgo. Because I would say that this year Mercury's just been besieged in many ways. Especially being with a Saturn and Pluto conjunction on January 12th with the sun and air and... <laughs> Sarah, it's like that was just a hell of a transit for Mercury that it's got to live 37 years through. That's why you see the media, the world, or everybody doesn't know what the fuck's going on. So Mercury being in Virgo is a great thing here to try and figure out things, and especially with the North Node being in Gemini, which is a Mercury-ruled energy, it's good. And with the Moon, though, opposing Neptune, it's like, of course, you emotionally want to have a reality, have a lot more dreamy energy and a lot more of that in there. But the only way that's going to come is big choices, right? The moon's going to try it over to Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn. We still got that doorway open of Neptune and Jupiter in the sextile, but it's breaking apart as Jupiter's still going to retrograde to 17 degrees. Um, and, uh, you know, this sun finishing in Leo here is coming towards Regulus. So th th this is this moment that's building right now on Thursday and into Friday before the sun leaves Leo with Mars still in Aries of like 
I don't want to call it glory, but the glory of your happiness, the glory of your heart, the big changes that you can make. And look at Juno here. Look at Juno that's been in alignment and in a quincunx to Neptune and in a square to Jupiter. And Juno is the ultimate energy of, you know, she is the goddess of all goddesses because when Zeus marries her, gosh, she just, be, you know, Jupiter marries her, she becomes the, the, the goddess of all the goddesses. That's his wife. That's who he chooses. That's the wife or the partner energy of marriage. To the sign of Libra, too. But there's, 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 again, if it doesn't have structure, and if it has no, I guess you could say, uh, whether you want to call that some sort of dreamy energy to it, then don't try it. <laughs> Just don't even try it. I think that Thursday um, can be a very positive day of implementing dreams into structures if you're willing to make chances and you're willing to take risks and you're willing to, to take that heart aspect and, and truly know it, like it's from your heart. If it's not from your heart and it's from just trying to feel comfortable and you're not excited about it, then I wouldn't do anything. Anything without simulation right now, let's take a look at Friday now because this is where things are going to get, you know, the activation of not only this Mars-Saturn, um, but it's the activation of a lot of things because the sun's on its last day in Leo. Remember, this is an important day. The, the original location where all of us were born, unless you were born since 2012, uh, it was 29 of, uh, degrees Regulus, the star. So with the sun being here, you know, for a lot of us, if you were born before 2012, you know, this is where you step into your regal energy of self and what the life is that you want to have. And we're not seeing any really, you know, big hard quincunx anymore, I would say, to Saturn. So I, I would say that this is like with just to still working off that trying to Mars and, and working off the moon in Libra, which the sun in Leo, the moon in Libra, this is about relationships. This is about the things that make us happy. This is an important relationship moment. Especially with Venus at 13 degrees here. This is the exact degree where the lunar eclipse was that we just had on July 5th, July 4th for that, uh, us on the West Coast. America, America's sun-Venus conjunction uh, is happening. And the moon is getting ready to square Venus uh, on the weekend when we're coming into a hellstorm. So it's like Friday, Sun and Leo, Moon and Libra. Like, let's find that balance. Let's find that harmony. Let's find those relationships. Let's find those things in our heart that are really courageous, that are really going to bring out the edge of the true lion's gate. <laughs> and really take action towards that. Mercury at three degrees of Virgo. Remember, Mercury's going fast. Like, look, let's look at how fast Mercury's going. Wow. Almost two degrees. Remember, it was two degrees. Now it just went in uh, past the sun. So, you know, it's still really fast. And, um, you know, it's kind of interesting. Look at the declination at 11 uh, degrees, too. It's like really aligned with the sun. So it's getting burned, burned, but it's it, it, in many ways, it's an exact, it's like it's channeling the sun's energy very clearly as the messenger. The messages of how to change your reality and what to do about changing your reality, especially with the moon in Libra and the sun in Leo on this day at the very edge of the universe, on Regulus, on, you know, and this is for people born before 2012. And after 2012, right, you were born with Regulus and Virgo at zero degree. So I would just say that, you know, take that. Take the reins of your life, the things that you want to do. Fuck it. You got nothing left to lose because I'll be honest, no more positive sun energy. The sun is not coming into another positive place for the sun, truly, until March 20th of 2021. Let's just remember that. The sun's not going to go through any of its better house systems, okay? It's actually going to come in through its fall position, you know, in Libra, and then it goes into its uh, detriment in Aquarius. So this is where the sun doesn't really come into any of its great energy anymore. And, and this is the end of summer, or end of, you know, end, you know there was a great... Uh, there was a great surf movie in the old old days, you know, that it reminds me of this. Like this end of summer time is trying to ride that wave still of life, of that positive energy. And Virgo does that if you are willing to change your life and adjust at the same time to continue the energy of summer and bring it into the fall winter. Now, if you're in Australia, I know that this is positive because you're getting closer to the edge of your winter and getting ready for your spring in a month. So 
and I really hope for those. I pray for all those down in South and all of uh, everywhere in the world. But I just those on the on the south side of the earth, that southern hemisphere. I'm just I just want to let you know I'm praying, and I want to let you know that I think about you all every day right now when I wake up. I really do. I think about Australia a lot right now because a lot of you all are from Australia. And I just want to say I love you all, and I'm thinking of you all, and I know that what's going down there, we don't. There's not a lot of info, and it's crazy. And I know that. You know, I hope that liberty comes through for you all at the end of the day. But just taking a look back at these planets, remember we are in massive retrograde city. Um, and with Mars now at 15 minutes a day, remember Mars is not going to be going anywhere at 25 degrees. It's going to go to 26 this weekend. So use this great energy that has arrived truly, especially with the moon that will oppose uh, Chiron in, uh, here and with Lilith. I would say that, yeah, you know, when it comes to relationships and stuff, there is this kind of feeling that, you know, we have to kind of put down parts of our ego and how we might think relationships must be identified in our ego and, and put the emotions of the relationships that actually, you know, it, it, there's risk involved. There's a lot of risk. It's, it's three plants and then Capricorn. So here we come to the weekend, Saturday, sun comes into Virgo. Now, what, what I did is I actually did a chart for the ingress here. So... Uh, what we're going to see on Saturday here is August 22nd. We're seeing that sun come into Virgo at zero degree with Mercury at five degrees. And we're going to see Venus at 14. And see that Venus is getting ready for that opposition to Jupiter. And so what is that? Well, it's getting ready for that trine over to Neptune. Look at m the moon. That day is going to be really stressed out. Okay? This weekend's going to be stress city if you're not willing to take risks to have the feelings you want and you're not willing to make changes in your life to better feel. Although remember that we are in a 45 degree angle. We are in a semi-square of the sun and Venus. Venus hasn't gotten enough speed yet to get closer to the sun, right? She's, 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 she's getting her brights up. She's, she's, she's moving as fast as she can, but that's a semi-square, and that, that means that in order for your reality to change, you have to be willing to make physical changes to your things that are, are going to make you feel good and physical and comfortable. Home life stuff, the people that you call your home, the people that you're around. And, and it's going to be a stressful weekend with the moon in, 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 in Libra, with Juno wanting this ultimate connection thing. But, you know, in opposition to Mars, uh, you know, if you're not willing to take the action and, and harsh squares to Capricorn. If you don't have the structures, you're not willing to, you're not willing to see the structures and the South node now has left the galactic center. It's still there, but technically degree wise, we were seeing a 2656. We're out of 27 degrees. So you, you don't want to miss the opportunities that really are the build up to the weekend because then you might just sit this weekend and go, what the hell did I do? And I'd also, and I also want to like say this, if you're not willing to change something with the energy of Leo, because you're too afraid or you're, you're too afraid to just step into what you really want. And you're going to take on things that you really don't want to do this weekend. People, situations, like you're, you're not going to have a fun time. You're going to be like, I should have done this. I should have followed my heart, heart, heart. And you can't feel weird about doing that Thursday and Friday. You can't. Because this weekend sucks. Especially if you are going to go into it blind. Because on Sunday, oh man, I don't know. I, I'm just going to say, I don't know. Because here comes the Mars, square Saturn, both very slow. Even, even Ceres having fucking trouble on my iWatch. So sun at one degree of Virgo, that means we're clicked fully into gear, okay? We got the Mercury here at seven degrees of Virgo. So that's going to start quincunxing Chiron. Ooh, owie, mama. Mars. Ooh, owie, mama. 26 degrees. Thank God I'm a Leo rising at 26. I get the trine, but most of you all get the shit show of the Mars square Saturn. So um, that's going to last a long time. And, and that's going to feel very restricted. And I give you a lot of the analogies of, of are you going to really go forward in your life? And if there's no structure there, there's no plan, are you going to really try and just go create something that doesn't make sense for your destiny that you're not sure about in your heart? Because, because if you're unsure about things, here's Venus starting to oppose Jupiter, right? It's like, are you... Are you still hanging on the fence of like, I am all in on choice of my destiny? Or you're like, I'm still trying to figure it out. Look at that moon in Scorpio. So the moon is fall at its worst position. Now Mercury's going to quincunx Chiron. The sun's now in Virgo on, on Regulus that passed. And that's why I'm saying like, I would say that Sunday is going to be the harshest because now it's Mars, square, Saturn, 
moon in Scorpio feeling like what? And there's an opposition to the moon, to Uranus and Taurus. Wanting to have the necessities of the emotional, physical desire world. And if you're not willing to take some sort of, you know, I would say it's called security risk of your truth of what the life is that you really want. And from the heart that was coming into all this, like you're just gonna, you're just gonna feel what the hell ha is going on in my life? Mars is going to at least sextile the North Node at 26 degrees and trying the South Node. So this is where people, again, the negative of Mars trying the South Node is, oh, you know what? Let me just be hopeful. Let me just keep the door open. Let me just see. I, I mean, let me just, let me just, see. maybe it'll just happen later down the road. Let me just continue to ponder. Let me continue to ponder while I am going to be stuck in it. That's the hangman in tarot. Times 10 with the death card and the tower card. Because you're just too afraid. This is going to be the week that shows you. Are you too afraid to tell yourself, to tell other people, to tell any situation that you're not into it and you would rather do this? And because you're afraid of hurting people's feelings? You're afraid of stepping into your destiny? You're afraid to be like, that's my ship. I'm getting on it. I'm taking that seat. Are you going to be that person like, no, 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 no. Take that, take that, and then have nothing? I know it sounds crazy. And that's where that Virgo comes in, where it's too looking at every little situation almost too much. And Jupiter stopped, stopped, stopped. Because Jupiter's getting ready to come direct, but not yet. Look at it. It's at three seconds a day in degree that's a, it's only three seconds it's not moving or sorry three it's, it's, it's moving three minutes a day it's nothing and not minutes literal ge geometry match and mars is now at 13 it is so slow and that means mars is going to sit here right if if there is right 30 degrees and 60 well it's technically 59 minutes and 59 seconds right well if we're doing 13 minutes a day and if you go to 60 you know 15 15 is 30 so that's four days but you have to realize that every day mars is slowing down because what i'm about to show you is we come to monday look where's mars at on monday mars now 13 so it's going to go 13 so it's going to be at 26 19 and what does that mean look at saturn 26 19 we're going to start to see the exact square to mars square saturn while the moon in Scorpio will try in Venus. So there's a little bit of benefit Monday, but I would say that that's only if you made those big changes and commitments and the truth was there. If the truth wasn't there, you'll feel empty and hollow and you're like, I just need something. And there's that portal, that trine to Neptune, that sextile to Jupiter, Pluto. Um, and so th that's what I'm saying. It's like this weekend will be a big telling aspect of what you're really doing with your life and the choices that you made Thursday, Friday, even Wednesday. And that Mars square Saturn is going to be, is the structure there? Can I take action? Can I do it? And Mercury at nine degrees, look at this, nine degrees is going to start trining Uranus. And so Monday is a, a shebang that your reality will either go through a major reality shift in the most positive way and transformational way, or at feeling like something has to be ripped apart because you're like, I want this out of my life. What did I do? And I would say it's from things of more people being hesitant than action-oriented. This is the battle between action and hesitancy. And this is where hesitancy is your failure. Because that means that you don't have a structure. And your, your structure is to be hesitant. Your structure is to be a ponderer. You're, you're, you don't know how to be courageous in building a plan, taking a risk and planning that risk accordingly and planning it for your long term of how to get through this craziness in life that is here. It's gonna, I think there's gonna be stories. You watch this weekend into Monday that are gonna be like starting to set the tone of what the battle is gonna look like in this world. And because what? You wanna just, just think that it's just another weekend? You still on that life? Are you, are you really awake yet? Or are you just still on the, I want to be awake, but I don't really want to be. And I want to pay attention to what I'm coming into and that I'm coming into where there's not a lot of doors. Jupiter is stop, 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 stop. 1759 
not, it's not, it's not direct and it's not coming direct during this week of this show. No, it ain't. You want to talk about limiting, limiting options. We are at extreme limited because what is the degree that Jupiter is at its worst? 15 Capricorn. And now it's at 1759 Capricorn going backwards. So it's in orb of the worst degree and it's in Capricorn, the most limiting place for Jupiter and it's retrograde and the south node is in Sag and Mars is trying that south node. And it's like people's identity that just go in pondering, that just go into, I think I'll just have that option, I'll push it to the side of that job I could have now. Or I'm still battling this idea of who I want to be with in my life or a friendship or my family situation or a relationship. The pondering will actually kill you. Not literally, maybe. So, and especially that Venus, right? 16 degrees, that means it's getting ready op opposite Jupiter. So are you gonna have the feeling of good energy? Now Venus, Venus actually wouldn't mind it to change over with, uh, Venus doesn't mind Capricorn. Of course it's Saturnian energy, but Venus knows how to get what she wants in Capricorn. She can get too emotional and too hesitant in Cancer. Like, I want to make sure that the kids have the right socks, you know? Where it's like, uh, do they have socks so we can go? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, they don't have to be Christmas socks, even if it's Christmas morning. They could just be white fucking blank Hanes fucking socks. You know what I mean, Capricorn? As long as the fucking kid has socks on, they're not even going to be seen anyway. Let's go. And Jupiter would way rather be in Cancer. That's where it's exalted. So it is like, are you missing out on the greatest situations and money relationships and all these things because you're hesitant and because you're too afraid to act to the truth of your true emotional self and take big risks? That's the, that's the truth. And you're going to feel like you're stuck because you have your own inner pondering fears, your own inner, I don't want to make change and I don't want to cause any disruption. Even though Mercury trying Uranus is like, in order to have that amazing thing that you want in your life, to connect to your world. The only way for that to happen is to change the reality. Instead of sitting around like, I'm just gonna fucking, no, I'm just gonna, you know, let me just give it one more shot or one more little look. You already know. If it didn't reveal itself already, you already know. The facts. Stop doing this whole, I gotta know. You already know because the facts tell you. Because Tuesday as we end, there it is. Venus opposed Jupiter, bam. And that's what I'm saying is by this point, you'll either feel abundant or you'll feel stripped away because that moon will be in Sag, square the sun, and that causes seizure-like energy. Might not be literal, but actually in health astrology, that's seizures. And you pant freaking out about the truth because Venus opposed Jupiter is like, either I'm abundant or I don't have, any, I don't have anything. Because of what you, how you played this week, and with Mars square Saturn still, like I said, it's just going to continue. And look at Mars now slowing down to 12, and here's Jupiter still retrograde. And I'm just trying to tell you, look at Mercury actually is going to be trining your honor still. So that Monday and Tuesday night will be the revealing of whether or not your environment is the ultimate or the shit show. Because this is going to be a big lesson from Virgo to Sag, which we need. That Mercury is the ruler of alchemy and the understanding of hermeticism and the understanding of the universe, not Jupiter. And, and it's gonna be like, when you ponder and you keep way too many open doors and you keep way too many like, I don't knows, and you keep way too many, well, I, I, maybe I'll just be free to just continue to not figure things out fully in myself, in my heart. And with Venus opposing Jupiter and with the moon squaring the sun in Virgo, Virgo is going to be like, you don't know how to execute a reality and make it work for you. Because nothing works until you choose the reality in Leo in your heart and you embody the king and queen within yourself to have a king or queen kingdom work and function. That you don't have a heart that knows how to function because you don't know how to make choices. You don't know how to make risks. You don't know how to follow your true heart. You don't know how to make your own mind up you just want to continue to either follow the world, 
follow the world's mind, or you're too afraid to confront what your true wisdom inside is and your true wisdom of your power within yourself. And don't, let, don't ever think Virgo is some weak sign. Virgo is not. Virgo is this. That's why there is no point for Mercury as of an exaltation point because Mercury is at home in Virgo, Mercury is at home in Gemini. Don't give Mercury no, and especially the sun, no, 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 like weakness being here in Virgo. You either know how to make your reality the greatest ever with the trines of Uranus, or you don't, because you don't know how to understand worth and value. With that moon in Scorpio this week opposing that, you're too emotionally stuck on underneath un being unsure. You don't know how to be sure. You don't know how to see something and be like, I'm sure, I'm in there. And if you're just still contemplating that, then why do you even have it in front of you in your life? Just be like this. Nope, that's not it. Psh. And that's cold, I know. It's hard. But that's the whole lesson of Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto, and Capricorn. Is the only ones that get there is when they make choices, make decisions, and go like this. Like, am I going to use this pen or this one? No, I'm not using that one today. But it's like, no, oh my God, you threw the pen. You know, like, this is where people who spilled, they spill milk. They cry over spilled milk. Is it really worth it? Oh, my God. And on Netflix, those documentaries, and don't spill the milk, don't drink the milk, and don't, you know, it's like, wow, how far are you going to get in this world right now? Juno going to be squaring Pluto exactly. So, so this could be ultimate transformation of the ultimate again with relationships and so forth or just the ultimate hell that you put yourself through because you, you did not know how to act correctly. You did not take an action that, you know, actually went with your truth, especially with your destiny, that aligns with your destiny, that aligns with the ultimate ship that you really want to be on because it would be the alternate destiny course that you would realize with people. Like, fuck, this person really is not on the same boat as I really am on my life. And that's where you are going to learn your lesson or find your greatness. You're going to ride into the sunset of greatness into this hell that's coming and not feel the hell. Or you will feel the hell because you really can't make these choices. You don't know how to do that. You don't know how to follow your instincts and you don't know how to see the environment for what it is and execute and also Oh shit, Venus is about to oppose Jupiter. I better have all the things that I need in my life and I better make sure that I understand the relationship situations that I want fully that are going to open up my doors that are very extremely limited in my life because they're only limited to allowing only the people that are fully in their full destiny, know for sure it, and access it and only take in those things that are fully for that to take the ultimate enough energy to even get to where all of our destinies are going, which is going to take all the energy we have in all of ourselves in our life and no distractions towards pondering. No distractions towards, well, let me keep this door open and still see. And so we, we end this week with Mars and Saturn still in square. And it will still be there when I talk to you next week and getting ready for Jupiter to come direct and, you know, these last, you know, weeks when Jupiter's always retrograde, I always like to say it. It's, in my opinion, in astrology, where you feel like the world is going to end. And with now you add this Mars square Saturn and stuff, doubly. And then you add Mar Jupiter retrograde in Capricorn in opposition to Venus, quadruply. Quadruply times a million. And it will feel like your world is coming to an end because of the fact that you don't know how to make a world of the one that you want to have. That you are, I'm just gonna say it, playing child's play with reality. That you don't know how to step into your power yet. And that's okay. Nothing, we're not all like keeping score here, but Saturn is. And to finish this, and on this last day, why was it so important to pay attention to the beginning of this week? Because the sun is no longer at plus eight or even plus 10, it's at plus one being in Virgo. The moon is in horrible aspects in Scorpio and, and, and so forth. And so you get Mercury at plus 12 though. So you, you, you better understand, you gotta be smart. You gotta be, you gotta be somebody who figures out, it is the year of the rat, don't forget. The rat asked the ox, hey, let's go ride together and let's win this race. 
And when you see Saturn at plus seven now, even though Mercury is kind of ruling the, the, the race right now, it, it, it is this Saturn that's still with Jupiter, Pluto and all that. And, and even with Venus here, if you don't understand Saturn, Venus, that in order to get what you want, you also have to execute plans and you also have to make the best ideas that actually have structures and choices and decisions, then you, you're, gonna, you're not gonna feel good. And, but, but you know, Saturn's keeping score. And Saturn's also stopping people literally in their tracks who are not playing the game and understanding how to play the game. Who do you want to send it to? I don't know. Who do you want to send it to? I love you all very much. Thank you so much for being a part of Deep Astrology. Thank you for always sharing these videos and truly appreciate you all very much. And I hope that all of you are not afraid to if you know you feel it, are you ready to see it? Or are you somebody who's afraid to feel it even when you see it? Or are you afraid to feel it because you don't see it? There are a lot of little weird questions in there, but I think at the end of the day, you know what to do. Why do you ponder it? Stop that this week. Be a true, passionate, energetic reality changer and make your life great. Or sit on the bench.